We're good. All right, here we go. All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to your Friday morning safety meeting. Today is April 12th, 2024. Got a big crowd here in Springfield today. Got some donuts out there on the table. Compliments of Blue Beacon. Uh, first and foremost, welcome. My name is John Harden. I'm with our safety department. Alongside me is Dave White, also in our safety department. Good morning, Dave. Morning, John. Everything going well for you? Everything's going great. Man. We've got a nice, beautiful day outside. Temperature's great out here. I think it's right around 50 degrees right now. They're talking 70s this weekend, 70s and low 80s maybe by Sunday. So hopefully we've turned that corner on the weather. I hope so. You know, we're getting closer and closer to summer, warmer weather, further and further away from that snow and ice. Uh, that four-letter word, snow, we can do without that for a while. So but welcome, everybody. And opening day of turkey season on Monday. It is, it is. There's a lot going on right now. So, you know, first and foremost, hopefully everybody's enjoying breakfast. So let's give John Blancett and his staff a big round of applause here in Springfield. Also at the other terminals. He's always working too hard to come out and getting any in recognition. So we appreciate that. So, you know, let's jump right into Pennsylvania. Let's go up to Rick Effort. Good morning, Rick. How are you? Hey, good morning, everybody. How you doing? We're doing great. How's things in Pennsylvania? Hey, it, it, you know, it's good up here. You know, it's, uh, that old adage, they say uh, uh, April showers bring May flowers. Well, uh, Mother Nature's uh, keeping her end up uh, on that one there. It's uh, nothing but rain through the weekend. It's, uh, it's not going to be sunny, that's for sure. Well, we won't tell you that it's going to be sunny and 80 degrees down here. So hopefully we'll move that your direction, though. What do you got you going know, on up there this week? You know, it's a great week. Uh, we had a great orientation class. Uh, you know, they're kind of dead in here right now, a little sparse as far as drivers are concerned. But uh, hopefully they're all out on the road making some money. And uh, we got a bunch of people down at the training pad working on their pre-trips and uh, CDL licenses. So, yeah, it was a good week. Well, outstanding, outstanding. So, you know, we stole one of your folks. I saw Lisa down here walking around this week. So we appreciate her being down here. And, and hopefully you've got support up her, up there with her being gone this week. You know, we got we got support. Yeah, we do miss her, but uh, we, we got we got support. All right, good deal. Well, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please get them a microphone and hop in at any time today. Thank you. Uh, have a great day. All right, thank you. All right, let's go out west to Salt Lake City. I believe we have Aaron Ward out there this morning. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, guys. Uh, good to see you from Salt Lake City. Uh, we are getting that good weather that you guys are talking about. It's uh, going to be upper 70s out here today and sunny. Um, no snow in the forecast, so that's the first time I've been able to say that in a while. A um, couple things we've got going on out here. We've got uh, the new testing standards for the CDL testing is going to go in effect on Monday, and we're all geared up and ready for that. We've got the new pads painted, and as uh, Stan Kastricke mentioned last week, we're all good to go out here. Our trainers and uh, examiners are all trained up, and we're ready. All right, good deal. Well, no snow out there, so no rain either out in the, the forecast or coming up forecast. No, sir. We're we're high desert out here, so rain is uh, few and far between on the on that uh, front. All right. Well, you'll start seeing. You know, everyone out there will start seeing our our safety messages transitioning from snow and ice over to rain and wind and and flooding potentially. So, you know, let's keep an eye on that weather out there. Uh, we'll go through that a little bit here, probably whenever we talk about awareness month out there. There you go. Yes, very much so. So. What we got next to Johnny? All right, Aaron, we appreciate it. You know, as always, if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, please grab the microphone and get in front of them. So let's come back here to Springfield, well, Missouri. Guys. Good morning. He's awake. All right, we've got a good crowd here, and you know we've got a lot of yellow vests showing up here today, which I like to see. So if you're at any of the three terminals and this is your first week here at Prime, whether you're at a DC, to BC, an AC, whatever the case may be, Please stand up and let us welcome you to the Prime family. All right, always good to see new associates with us this morning. So It is, no doubt. And I'd like to throw out my welcome as well. And, uh, you know, 
this, you come to a great company, no doubt. Uh, hopefully you've done your research on us. Hopefully you looked at us before you got here. I see a number of you shaking your heads over there. That's good. Uh, you need to know who you're going to work for, and that's important, what kind of training you're going to get. You're going to get the best training here if you're starting out getting your CDL that you will at any place because it's hands-on. You know, once you get your permit and you get through all that, you get through orientation, the fun stuff, the drug tests, the physicals, you know, we all enjoy getting once a year. And some, some of us is less than that. You know, it's, uh, you know, once you get out there and get rolling, that's what it's about. It's about learning hands-on and uh, Prime provides you that opportunity here to, to get that hands-on experience. And it's the best in the industry. So not only that, you get to deal with our customers and you get to deal with our enforcement and the motoring public. So the end of the day remember safety is number one your safety is the most important out there and so is that of the motoring public so it comes down to it you got a question you got a concern let us know let your fleet manager know uh that's your travel agent we call so to speak uh, kind of a nickname for them but they do a wonderful job and they got a big they got a big uh, job description here it's just they just don't only dispatch trucks they do a number of things in payroll and making sure you get home on time and things like that or trying to get you home on time. And sometimes that just doesn't happen, but they do the best they can do. And we got a lot of dedicated fleet managers here, no doubt. But uh, get to know your road assist people, get to know your log people, get to know your safety people. You know, maintenance is extremely important on your truck. So make sure you understand that. Uh, nobody wants to be broke down on the side of the road out there. So make sure you got you understand that that aspect of it. And uh you know, we got classes to put you through as well. So anything to make you successful, that's what we're here. We're here to support you. So absolutely. You know, I'll just add to that. You know, here at Prime, you know, your safety, the, the motoring public safety, that's our number one priority, our highest calling. You'll hear both of those terms frequently as you listen to these meetings, uh, any events that Prime host, you know, Mr. Wecky, Mr. Lowe, when they're up speaking, you know, we talk about safety a lot. So when you're out there on the road, please keep that as your, your main priority, your number one concern, and never put yourself in a situation, you know, that, that you might be in a position where you're not supposed to be out there on the road. We want you to err on the side of caution, you know, whether it's weather related, traffic related, whatever the case may be. If you're not comfortable and you're having second thoughts about it, you know, reach out to your fleet manager, reach out to somebody in the safety department, and, and we'll try to help you the best that we can. And, you know, this company is quite a bit different. If you've looked around at other companies, you're not going to see a uh, director of sales up here talking about safety. You're not very seldom. Have I ever seen it a, at a, a safety meeting, an owner stand up and talk about safety, but here at Prime they do. And it, it, it trickles from the top on down. And, uh, you know, we got great uh, management staff here. And it starts with our owner, Robert Lowe. And we're just really lucky to have an owner like that, a hands-on owner. And he, believe me, he's hands-on. He knows what's going on around here. And, uh, you know, he's number one driver advocate too. And he'll say that to you all. So it's great to have him. Uh, makes this place very special compared to other companies. So uh, we're just fortunate to have a, a, a management staff like that here at Prime. So. so let's jump right in. You, you went through the inspections this week. Kind of a Let's hold off on the inspections real quick. Let's talk okay. about what happened this past Wednesday. Okay. Uh, yeah. We had a big event, didn't we? So let's ask D. Silva to come on up here. We had our Highway Diamonds Gala that recognized all of our female drivers, which we have a lot of female drivers, don't we? Yes, Dean? we do. Ladies, if you were at the event on Wednesday night, I need you to stand. If you're here and you were there, wasn't that an amazing night we had? Oh, my gosh. Like, I swear, I don't think we can do any better next year. Every year it gets better and better and better. And honestly, I look forward to this event every single year. So I bought my dress a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say um, how proud we are of our winners. Every single one of you are winners because you represent Prime every single day. And for that, I want to thank all of you. Um, our Highway Diamond of the Year is Doreen Cook. Give her a hand. She's not here today. Our Radiant Award winner is Kirsten Rothlander. Give her a hand. She's one of our YouTubers who does an outstanding job. And our uh, Emerald winner was Dora Young, who is a trainer. She also does an outstanding job. 
And so for all you ladies, I just want you to know we have a support group right on Facebook. Even if you're not on Facebook, we're asking that you join because we want you to come on there, share your stories when we go live on Thursdays. Um, the name of the group is called Prime Highway Diamond Support, and we are trying to build momentum in that group. The only way that can happen is if you guys join and you become active and you start posting in the group. I'm trying to help you to build a network so strong that when you are out there, you are making a difference. Not that you're not, but you're making a presence out there on those highways and to our customers and to other women who want to come into this industry. So with that, I want to say thank you for being such a great audience. Even the men came in with the right attitude. I just love seeing everybody all dressed up and beautiful. I want to thank um, our photographers who were there. We had a red carpet um, event. It was beautiful. And every woman that went across that red uh, carpet felt special. That's what we wanted them to feel. I also want to thank um, Mitch, Jamie, Clayton, Brooke, um, Summer, also, uh, Nikki Morrison for all their help and for everybody who helped us to stuff bags and get those gift bags ready. It was an amazing night and you guys are incredible. I don't think you realize how great it is here and what we have. So I do want to thank Mr. Lowe. He's not here yet. Um, but I do want to thank him for giving us this opportunity every single year. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Dee. Appreciate it. So let's jump into some safety numbers, shall we? So our inspections this past week, we had 97 total inspections. So we were down. We're under 100. We've had a couple weeks like that recently, so that's great. Uh, 69 of those were clean, so a 71% clean rate. That percent number stays up there, so keep going, everybody. Yeah, give a round of applause to yourself. Good job. And John, kind of like last week, you know, Bill did them last week for us. He said a number of unsafe drivings were way down. And so the same thing that I saw. I actually signed off on all the inspections and looked at them. Our unsafe driving has dropped. Uh, we've had less violations in the last couple of weeks. So keep that going as well. That'll definitely help us on our unsafe driving basic. Well, a couple of things I did see, though, that kind of caught my eye was a, a few inspections where we're missing brake check stations. Remember, some of these states have brake checks where they want you to stop, check your brakes, make sure your brakes are working properly before you start descending down a hill. So, you know, uh, states like Georgia, out, out west, you'll see them in Colorado and, uh, you know, keep going Wyoming and such too. Make sure you stop and check your brakes. If you see a brake check station and you roll on by and you think, my brakes are fine. No, that's a requirement. You need to pull in and check. And if there's an officer there, they're going to write you inspection. So just a reminder on that, um, you know, you want to make sure you got brakes when you're going down a, a steep incline and uh, or a steep decline, I should say. So that being said, you know, just, just a heads up on that one. But other than that, John, we did really well. Outstanding. You know, talking about unsafe driving, April is distracted driving awareness month. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We've got a lot of things that are that are happening right now. Of course, you know, it's road construction season. We've seen it right here north of Springfield going up 65 Highway. Uh, you're going to have schools that are going to be letting out within the next month. So you're going to have additional traffic on the road, vacationers out there traveling, uh, the summer holidays that are coming up. So, you know, all of these things are going to lead to increased traffic, uh, increased chances where, where we could put ourselves in a situation that, that we don't want to be in. So please, we're begging you, don't drive distracted. Put your phone in the bunk. Put it in a backpack. Don't let it be a temptation to you out there on the road. And be on the lookout for those drivers. You all see them every day out there texting, going down the road, or maybe somebody's putting on their makeup or they're reading a book or reading their uh, their phone or answering an email, whatever that may be. You know, keep an eye on those people. Those are the ones you want to keep an eye on when they're coming by you, if they're passing you. Make sure they stay away from you because they're not they're not they're not focused in on their drive and they're focusing on what's going on at hand, which is their phone or maybe they're listening to music or whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, that's important this time of year. Good, good reminder that uh, awareness, distractive driving awareness month. And, you know, another thing I'm gonna throw out there too, this summer, we're gonna have a bunch of inexperienced drivers out there, kids in high school, maybe just got their license, 
and they don't know much about driving safely. I hate to say that because there's no driver's ed in any state anymore, it seems like. And unless you're like what I did with my kids, I put them through driver's ed. I paid that extra money during the summer. They didn't really like going, but they learned a lot. And so far it's paid off for both my kids. And I got one more to go and he'll be taking it this summer too as well. But uh, you know, it's important you know, to, to remember these, these youth out there, they don't, they don't get the training they need. So we have to compensate for that. That's part of being a professional driver. So, but uh, that's why you guys got the hardest job out there. We're fortunate, Johnny, we don't, but uh, we're here, so. Absolutely. Well, let's get right into our speakers here. I'm going to kind of switch the order up on you here just a little bit from what I put down. So, you know, we talked, we, we made an announcement that, that Trinity Health is is now Command Health. We, we've got a new provider downstairs. We're going to bring up Dr. Uh, Luke Van Kirk. If you come up this morning, please. Good morning and welcome. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Um, you guys can Dr. Luke, uh, that's what my patients in my other clinic call me. Dr. Van Kirk is a little too uh, formal for me. Um, but uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Abraham and Prime for giving me this opportunity. It's big shoes to fill with Dr. Abraham. He's been here for a long time. They're doing a great job. So my main goal is to not mess it up, not, not uh, uh, you know, try to keep this, this good thing going that he's already got in place. We want we majority of the staff are all staying, um, all the faces you're used to seeing. Hours will be the same. Um, try not to make a lot of big changes. A um, little bit of my background. Um, I've been in Springfield for a long time. I went to Evangel for undergrad, went to my family medicine residency at Cox. Um, and then I started my other clinic, Command Family Medicine, um, back in 2015. Um, and so we have a location in Springfield on the south side on National and then uh, also in Branson. Um, and so uh, like I said, vast majority of things are going to be be staying the same. Um, you know, the uh, appointment uh, availability, prices, all that. Um, we will be uh, rolling out a couple new services as we get the uh, transition completed um, here in the next couple of months. One of them being a, uh, something to do with my other office is called platelet-rich plasma uh, (PRP) injections. If anyone's familiar with those, um, you use that for arthritis, tendonitis, joint ligament uh, injury, things like that. Um, and what we do is we draw the patient's blood out, we spin it down, it separates the plasma from the red cells, and then you have platelets in the plasma that are full of growth factors and we can help heal uh, injuries and um, help improve arthritis symptoms and things. So uh, be on the lookout for that here in the next couple of months. And then also um, the uh, my other clinic, Command Family Medicine, we do is called direct primary care. So instead of using insurance, we offer a monthly membership to patients um, and they pay a flat monthly fee. There's no co-pays when they come in. They get to pick their provider that they see pretty much every time. They get a cell phone number to text them directly, their email address, um, or increased access there. And then we also get them access to wholesale prices on lab work and prescriptions, which saves 80 to 90 percent there. And then uh, most procedures that we do in the office are wholesale. So if somebody say needed some stitches, we charge essentially what the supplies cost us, which is 15 to 20 dollars. So um, we'll be rolling that out here in the next couple of months as well, probably around June. So um, especially for uh, any lease drivers that um, either you know may not you guys may not have insurance or have a high deductible plan maybe a good option for you uh, especially when you're out on the road and you can text your provider directly and get a prescription sent into wherever you happen to be in the country so, um, so real quick intro for me I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has anybody any yeah. what's that it's like for us to be able to do that when we be on cards because I'm I'm interested. For the membership, uh huh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll get communication out when when that's live when you're able to sign up. I want to get the transition done smoothly and all the new systems and everything in place there. And then once that's ready to roll out, we'll we'll communicate with everybody and give you instructions on how to sign up with that. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, One Bob. question. Good to see you here. Thank you. We appreciate it. So anybody does have any questions for Dr. Luke, they're downstairs where they've always been. So yeah. feel free to go down there and ask.
yeah, it's usually not our Dr. Uh, Luke. Usually we don't have donuts out here like we do this morning, but we had a vendor show up and provided them. So we're not that bad on our health. So. <laughs> Feel free to have one if you want one. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to bring Donna up with our log department here. So good morning, Donna. All right. I caught her off guard here a little morning. bit. Morning, everybody. How are you today? Good. Okay. Uh, my name is Donna. I'm from the log department. This is actually Rebecca. She's actually just starting in training with us today. Um, she's actually going to be taking for, over for another one of our associates. You may know Debbie, who will be retiring this summer. Okay. Uh, but today we're here just to talk about um, the low tab option in your call come unit. So a lot of questions we get is um, some of the prompts are, that come up uh, in the Qualcomm unit whenever you're logging in or that. One of them is the load information tab. So we're going to go over that today. So I think we have a slide. Oh, can you get the slide? They're working on it. Okay. So um, under your hours of service application, there are going to be several tabs that you're going to see across the top. And one of them is the load tab. This is where you're going to go to see all of your load information for each one of your loads and also to make any changes or updates that may be needed. So looking at the load tab, um, the first slide right there at the bottom of the screen is going to be history. If you select that button, it's going to give you your current and prior loads. Once you select a load, that's when you'll be able to go to the bottom and hit that edit button to open it up to show for the load information that's available or to make changes or updates. So one thing is we see is that information does populate automatically and we do rely heavily on that. However, things may happen, communication may be delayed or slowed. You always want to ensure that you go back to that load tab, check to make sure the information is correct at the beginning and then verify that all the information is correct at the end. So the load ID, the bill of lading, the picked and dropped up trailers, and the end date is showing correctly as well. Um, another thing, if you look at that slide in the top corner, whenever you log into your Qualcomm unit, this is when this prompt usually populates and we get our most phone calls. It asks you to enter load information. However, you're logging in for the first time, you've never had a load. The Qualcomm just needs to show prior days of what was going on. So when this populates, just select the button it's going to prompt you to put in information. All you're going to do is type in the word none, N-O-N-E, for just the load ID, the bill of lading, and the very first trailer ID box. Hit save, and then it will let you pass to continue on. Okay? But just make sure you do verify that information. This is a tab. DOT will pull up. Check your bills according to what's in the communication in the unit. Does anybody have any questions for Donna while we're, we've got her here? Uh, I notice oftentimes, because uh, I do use that tab a lot, uh, I, I notice oftentimes the bill of lading number has absolutely nothing to do with my paperwork. So that's when you would want to go back in, and that's what I mean by updating. I have heard that before, that information I dropped or picked up trailer especially wasn't uh, showing correctly. So if you see in any information that's not showing, coinciding with the bills, just go into history, select that load, hit edit, it will open it up, and then you'll be able to go in and make those changes or updates. All right, any other questions this morning? So talk a little bit about the ELD log class, what time it's offered and where you can take that. Okay, so our log classes are actually available Monday through Friday um, at each one of our terminals. If you are here at Springfield, you will take it live in person. Those classes are held at 1330 in the Plaza Building Multipurpose Room. If you take it at the Pittston Terminal or the Salt Lake Terminal, we simulcast live out to those terminals. So Salt Lake classes would be Monday to Friday at 12.30. Pittston would be 2.30 or 14.30 um, in the Pittston. All right, now are these, are these classes only for new drivers or who would these be classes, who would these classes be good for? So these classes are for everybody. They are walking. You just show up if you wanna take a class. Um, they are designated to anybody who, for upgrading specifically, but if you need extra training or just wanna to attend to get some extra information, Anybody is welcome. No pre-sign up needed. There you go. So you don't have to be signed up if you're here, if you're, your truck's in the shop a little longer than you expected, or if you know you're not leaving out till tomorrow and you need a refresher, it's a great class. How long did you say it lasts? Uh, two hours. It's a two hour two class, hours. invaluable information, yeah. everything you need to know out there. So please feel free to drop by if you're here, Pittston, Salt Lake City. 
if anybody else doesn't have a question, we'll let you go. But we ask that you might stick around over here for just a little bit in case somebody thinks of something. So. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good morning. Thank you, Donna. All right, John. Whittling through the speakers, man. And so far, pretty good. Absolutely. We've had, good, we've had a good meeting so far. So how about our next one? We're going to bring up our driver health and fitness folks, Colby and Rachel. Since you went out of order on me, I'm not for sure who you bring it up. Now. I was confused. Man. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Good morning. So I'm Colby, the driver health and fitness. This is Rachel, good our morning. on-site dietitian. So every week we always talk about, and we've been doing it this year, is some kind of health tip that we have for you guys. And we want to make sure that every, every time we're doing it, it's something different, obviously. We were talking earlier, this month is Stress Awareness Month, so on our socials, we're posting things weekly about that. Rachel's got one this week for us. What do you have for us? So this ties in really well with Dr. Luke just coming up. Um, it's getting your baseline labs done and just kind of knowing your numbers. It's a great way to know if you do have you know, a health condition going on that you can start acting on in reverse, and that's what we're here to help you with. You know, You can bring us any type of labs and we can help go over them and help you make those lifestyle changes. Um, so 11.6 of the US population have diabetes, which that's a big one in this industry. It can create a lot of problems in this industry. And in specifically in this industry, you are twice as likely as like someone with a nine to five job to have diabetes. Um, so definitely wanna you know, keep an eye out for that. Get your A1C tested. Um, you know, it's like he was saying, like Dr. Luke was saying, like you can get, you know, kind of labs done for whatever at a pretty, pretty low cost. So that would be a great option for you guys. 38% um, uh, of the population have prediabetes. This is the chance that you have, if you do have prediabetes, to turn things around and never get to the point where you have diabetes. So that's what we can help with. Um, and yeah, we'd love to help you. And even if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your family, you know, do it for your friends um, because they care about you, you know, and that's, you can make an impact on their life as well by um, making a change. So. And that's a good point, Rachel, is a lot of times what we talk about, especially if you're talking about doing your, your uh, getting annual labs, things like that, is it, well, yeah, it's a checkup, but a lot of times too is things can change, right? And that's why we want to make sure when we're staying in front of it is things can change, your numbers could change. Uh, I know we've talked about it before. Sometimes it is a matter of like how you're being treated would change. So it's a good thing. But also, like Rachel said, it, 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 what it does is it helps us get on the preventative side of it is you can bring things to us about it. If you get in, it's pre-diabetic. We can get in things. We could talk about certain things. We could look at certain ways, things that impact it. Could be nutritionally. Could be exercise. You know, things. these kinds of things. They can help manage it on the road for you. So anybody have any questions about that real quick or comments? Okay. Well, I, one other thing I want to update you on, we had our Fit and 15 competition. It is officially closed now. Uh, we will, we're just collecting all the points. If you guys don't know what that was, we do it every year. It's a 12-week program. Uh, as we go through that, you collect points. This year, we actually had, I think, four or five drivers get higher amount of points than we ever had in the years past. So that is an amazing thing first. Uh, and we also had about, about similar participation, a little bit more. So uh, we will update you guys on that as soon as we get that collected uh, and kind of announce the winners from there. But uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, we do have a personal trainer in all three locations and then also Rachel and myself. So we are always here to help you. So, all right. Thank you guys. No problem, man. A lot of good info there. Absolutely. I should probably pay more attention. If you quit bringing, if you quit bringing donuts, that would help us. You know what I mean? You know, I try. <laughs> I got called out a couple of weeks ago for that too. So speaking of donuts this morning, we got blue beacon who's our provider of the donuts this morning here. Yeah. Give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Shout out to them. We have Sam Piper with blue beacon. That's with us along with Mr. Sam Messick from our accounting department. So this year, Sam's hockey team, the Vancouver Canucks, actually are going to make the playoffs. So he's happy. Unfortunately, my blues aren't. So I think we're heading that direction. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, so I have Sam Piper with me here this morning. Uh, most of you know Blue Beacon very well. If you're in the trucking industry for any length of time, you know who these folks are. They are really the gold standard in the wash industry. Uh, how many locations now, Sam? A hundred and 115. over 115. And that's, there's nobody else in the industry that has anywhere close to that size of network. So they provide a super important service for our business and for you all as uh, our operators and just for the industry as a whole. Just to give you an idea, 
we do over 150,000 washes, if you look individual washes with Blue Beacon on an annual basis. So these folks are touching our equipment probably sometimes more than we are, which is amazing. So they're part of the family. They're definitely part of our vendor family and we appreciate very much what they do for us. So Sam, you were maybe gonna give us just a few updates on some things that are going on at Blue Beacon, some new locations and stuff. So take it away. Well, I'm older than I look, so I brought notes. So bear with me, because sometimes I forget. Um, first of all, thanks very much to Sam and everyone here at Prime for inviting me here today. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been here one other time for this meeting and I enjoyed it very much and getting to talk with some of you, the drivers. Um, and probably most of all, thank you to all of you who drive for Prime because you're the one that uses our services sometimes several times a week. And we certainly appreciate each and every one of you. You're the heart of the industry and without you, Blue Beacon wouldn't be there. So thanks for that. Um, Blue Beacon turned 50 last year and it seems kind of strange that we would be 50 years old I've been there about 24 of those years, so about half of it. And um, Prime's always been a very valued customer and um, we're proud to serve you. Um, because you probably are at Blue Beacon much more, the truck wash is much more than I am because my job is mainly with people like Sam uh, across the nation. You probably know much more what's going on at Blue Beacon than probably I do. but. I thought I might share with you this morning a little bit about what we're planning at our home office. As far as new facilities, um, washout only bays, um, additional bays at locations, we know that probably the biggest problem, it's a, probably a good problem to have, but um, don't let me have it about our lines because sometimes the wait in our line is quite long. And so, um, you're nodding your head, so. <laughs> um, um, we're trying every day to do something about that. And one of the things that we're doing is wash out only bays. And we've put in quite a number of those across the country. And I'm hoping you're really pleased with the newest one, which is in Joplin. And that's one of your top locations with us. And I believe that washout only bay is up and running in Joplin, Missouri. We also have another one planned for Moni, Illinois, and those will um, join washout bays right only bays right now in Council Bluffs, Rochelle, Carlisle, Atlanta West, Milwaukee, Laredo, Dallas East, San Antonio East, and Commerce City, Colorado. And when I name those, you can probably determine those must be some of the best washout locations across the country, and uh, they are. And so uh, hopefully in the coming weeks and months and years, we can add more of those. If you're only there for a washout, your, your weight should be much less than what it would be if you had to go through a regular wash bay. And then new locations that we're planning on, and I say hopefully because in our industry, and like you at Prime here, probably deal with environmental issues all the time, but we get held up by states and cities and municipalities and uh, environmental issues play a large part in what we do. So hopefully we'll have new locations coming this year in Jacksonville, Florida and Forest Park, Georgia. And then going into next year, hopefully a new location in Birmingham, Alabama, Boise City, Idaho, Spokane, Washington, which has been one that a lot of people have asked for. And then I had to look up where this town was at, but it's Whitestown, Indiana. And um, I wasn't familiar with that because we have Indianapolis and then we have Whiteland right below it. So now we're gonna have Whitestown and I'm sure that'll be the source of some confusion, but we'll get there. So that's really all I had today. Yes. Say today. And so great. It's, we love hearing that you all are growing. We, you know, obviously our operators, we prefer Blue Beacon locations because you're consistent in the service that you provide and things. But, and a lot of, it, you know, a lot of the 
things that you all do on a daily basis as far as adding washout only bays and even some of the locations that you build and stuff is due to good feedback from our operators, right? From other operators like ours. So I guess, do we have any questions for Sam? And by the way, this isn't your only forum to ask folks like Sam questions. If you ever have questions or feedback, right? We love to hear it. Sam and the Blue Beacon team, they're very open and receptive to issues or comments, suggestions on how we can all get better at what we do every day. But any questions while we got Sam, Anthony? I got one location you could add to your list of looking at is Twin Falls, Idaho. A good one. And it's a one right. bay, and that line goes all the way to the fuel island some days. I'll, t I'll take that back with me, Twin Falls. Thank you, Anthony. Anybody else? Right back there. How do we, um, like, is there a website that we can go to to request that a Blue Beacon be built somewhere? In the we city? have our website, www.bluebeacon.com, and you can always go there. Um, probably another good thing would be at a, a truck wash, you could just speak with a manager at a truck wash and inform them, and um, you can always get with Sam and let him know a location. Our owner's son actually deals with the real estate. And so he's always receptive to new location requests. And we actually get most of our location requests from drivers. And so we appreciate that very much. So, yeah, feel free to just reach out to the field desk, reach out to me, reach out to Devin Stagner. Um, we'll be happy to get that information over to Sam too. And we, you know, we're constantly giving Sam and his team feedback on where we have washouts at where we have customers at that we need to support right through having wash up facilities close by. So anybody else? Well, we got Sam up here. Otherwise, Sam, thank you very much for the donuts. And Thanks for, for your business. We to appreciate it. Us. All right. All right. A lot of good information there as well. So we appreciate the yep. donuts, Sam. Thanks for coming in and speaking with the group this morning. All right, so I guess I skipped this guy already, but I might, as well, I might as well bring him on up. So from our uh, fleet manager division, we got Cole Baldus coming up talking about some claims prevention and ideas he has to help our drivers out. So good morning, Cole. Thank you. Good morning. All right, if there's one thing you can take away from me today, it is to slow down. And I'm not talking about just driving. Obviously, just driving, if we slow down, we're going to get the fuel cost. We're going to hopefully prevent any accidents. But I'm actually talking about the um, slowing down and um, studying what we're going to do today. When you guys get up for the day, maybe you have a pre-plan, maybe you don't. Immediately, if we, if we don't have a pre-plan, we're sitting there, we're available. Let's go look at the trailer. Let's run a pre-trip on the trailer get up in the trailer, walk all the way to the front of the front of the trailer, the nose of the trailer, double check all the rivets are in there, no cuts, anything like that. If we have any issues, don't hesitate to reach out to road assist, dispatch, we're all happy to help. Once you get to the shipper, obviously make sure you're full of fuel as well. Once we get to the shipper, check in, check in with all of our PO numbers, get in there, you know, guys, I, I understand if we sit in the dock door for six hours, we're frustrated, we finally get our bills, please stay at the shipper until you double check your location, the temperature on the bill. These bills are getting very complicated. Um, you have to read every single page of the bills. I've seen bills that have dry on the first two pages and 34 on the last two. We have to double check that. Circle the temp on the bills every time. Double check it. Our, what we show in our system is really just treat it as a guess. We're guessing what we think that temperature might be. We don't really know. A lot of our protein shivers will switch it to frozen. We don't know until we have the bills. We have to know that information. Double check your address on the 90. Extremely important. I'm going to tell you on all claims prevention, it's always best to get ahead of the issue than try to figure it out down the road. During transit, slow down. Again, plan your trip accordingly. Um, let's let's slow down. You know, going around corners, 
uh, leave plenty of following distance. I don't want any critical events. I don't know if anyone's seen a, a load shifted to the front nose of the trailer. It's not pretty. It costs time. It costs you guys money. Slow down. Once we get to the receiver, check in. Uh, we get unloaded, double check the bills. Um, you know, I've seen bills that are real complicated. You can't, you can't really see that they mark that we had a shortage. You need to double check it. You know, they're, they're, they're liable to not tell you that there was any claim at all. Once you get the bills, double check it, go to the back of the trailer. I want you to open up the doors and actually physically get in the trailer. I've had a lot of drivers open the doors and it's foggy in there and we completely miss a pallet in the very nose of the trailer. That happens more than you think. I want you to walk all the way to the front, make sure the chute's still in good shape. I've seen receivers tear down our chutes and we missed that. Once you verified you got a clean bill of lading, trailer's empty, send in your depart call and let's start planning that next trip out. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's very tough. These bills are getting more and more complicated. Um, I can't stress the importance of proof of delivery. Uh, different customers have different proof of delivery. A lot of times Walmart will give you a sheet that says proof of delivery. We have to have that. We have to have every PO or signed for our protein shippers. That's very important. A lot of times down the line, we'll get, you know, the fleet manager will get a message from billing saying, hey, we don't have this PO signed here and it's on the third page. Well, guys, I'm here to tell you it is next to impossible to get a receiver to sign for anything after the fact. Double check that. Anytime you have any issues along the way at all or anything funny or any, you know, you whenever you're putting your load locks in the trailer at the shipper, and you happen to see, you know, maybe the pallets aren't loaded correctly, or you think that there might be a potential issue, get a hold of us. Let's get it fixed right then. Um, another good, good, good advice here is whenever you put your load locks in, snap a quick picture with your phone. Whenever you lock the trailer at the shipper, you have your seal there, snap a quick picture. During transit, when you guys are getting out, going to the shower, restroom, whatever you need to do, take a quick walk around the back of the trailer and make sure that seal and lock is still there. Always double check that. Did you have a question? Yeah, we have a number of uh, receivers, especially that refuse to sign for seals intact when you're coming in. How adamant can we be about not giving them any access to it if they don't sign for the seal? Get a name get a name from them and immediately let dispatch know. We can note it as well. I would be pretty adamant though. Get a hold of us, but do not leave there because what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach out to that customer and say, hey, they're unwilling to sign for our bills. We're gonna get ahead of it. So if we but have not, that- Not that they won't sign for the bills, but when you're like coming into the guard shack and you go, hey, can you verify the seal? They go, oh, we don't do that. Uh, the seal integrity, I yeah. would note that on the bills. Guard Shack wouldn't 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 sign for the bills, but we use our in and out stamp as well. Right. Put that on there. Put your seal number on there. Make sure that those seal numbers are documented on your bills. You handwrite them. Gotcha. All right. No questions. No other questions any, for Cole. Any questions. So I wanted to do something real quick. You talked a lot about you know driving and preventing claims on that aspect, but we've got summer and warm weather coming up. And as a former fleet manager, I know there's you know some frustrations there. I wanted to bring up Andy Bell real quick to talk about how to run a proper pre-trip. I'm sure you've had it where you know they kind of short a pre-trip a little bit. Maybe the trailer's not running as it should, and you know if we get an ice cream or frozen meat load or something on there, could be a bad situation. Good morning, Andy. Morning. Thanks, John. Um, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm the actual on-site carrier rep. Um, a lot of you out there have seen me before several times. Um, the pre-trips are absolutely important. Um, we also have the Thermal Kings in the fleet, but run the pre-trip. Um, they usually take about 15 minutes or so to go through. The key thing I'll say on running the pre-trip, big thing, if, the, if you're picking up a trailer that has not been running, the unit hasn't been powered on, give it some time to run. Um, I usually suggest give it about 15 minutes because that trailer may have been setting for a little bit, so we don't know how long it's truly been setting. So give it about 15 minutes to run through, um, but in order to do the pre-trips, 
There's actually a pre-trip button on, the, on ours. Um, it'll be the second, if you hit the menu key, it'll be your second option on your soft keys underneath. Press, the, press that pre-trip button and hit the equal key. It'll start it into the pre-trip cycle. Um, the other thing that I can suggest on doing those, make sure you're at your set point on what you're gonna be picking up, okay? Run it up to the actual temperature where you're at. Because you may be in heating cycle or you may be in cooling cycle, depending on what, what, you, what product you have on that trailer. So I want it to pre-trip whichever one you're in, okay? So if you're picking up a 70 degree high valve load, make sure you're already at 70 degrees and let it run for, you know, like I said, about 15 minutes or so, then put it through your pre-trip cycle to run that. You don't necessarily have to wait for it to finish. If you're, if you're going, you're ready to go somewhere to pick it up, head it to your shipper, let it finish out. When next time you stop, it's gonna tell you, it'll, it'll keep it up on the screen and tell you whether or not I passed or failed, okay? Um, but if you guys have any questions on that, we do cover a little bit in the pro maintenance class. I'll give a plug for the pro maintenance class that they do every week. Um, if, and you can, I'll, I'll run through it on that. Um, if you ever have any questions on anything else, just get with me as well. Okay. Yeah. A couple of things real quick. Uh, Pre-cooling trailers, particularly with the summer season with produce coming on, how long do you estimate that you think, I know the ambient temperature <laughs> and everything else do this, but to me, starting a reefer unit 30 minutes before you get there on a, on a produce load is probably not gonna cut it and you're gonna get delayed. So just a guess what you think. Yeah. The second thing is, I just noticed it last week, is you have an IntelliSense out there called Dry Out, which a lot of these shippers, when you look at the notes, say trailer must be clean, trailer must be dry. So can you tell us about that IntelliSense too? Because that's the first time I saw it was last week. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll start with our Dry Out first. Uh, the Dry Out is, is designed to help dry out the trailer. It's not perfect, okay? It, it, a lot of it's gonna come down to where you're at, okay? Um, if you're in a high humidity area, it's going to take longer to dry a trailer out than it will if you're in a lower humidity area. So if you're down south somewhere, you're probably going to have to run it three or four times. Basically what it's designed to do, it will run and dry out for an hour and it'll revert back to the last IntelliSet that you were in. So you may have to, like I said, you may have to do it a couple of times through. Um, <clears throat> the other option is that basically what it's doing is it's kicking it into heat mode and then it'll go back into cool mode and it kind of just fluctuates back and forth. And it'll also defrost if it needs to as it does goes through that. So it does a lot of things behind the scenes that, um, that you don't really know what's going on with it. But but they do work really. And, and like I said, it's not perfect. So if you have one that's absolutely soaked and you're in a high high uh, humidity area, it's going to take a little bit. Um, but uh, but that dry out does help. I mean, it's, like I said, just you got to you got to kind of play it by ear and uh, lay it out a little bit. Um, what was the other question, Keith? Pretty cool, thank you. <laughs> I knew I was gonna forget it. Um, so the pre-cooling, a lot of the pre-cooling, yes, it will take time. Um, obviously, if you're in a high ambient area, if you guys have ever picked up the ice cream loads out, out in uh, Henderson, Nevada, you know it takes a long time if it's in the middle of the summertime. Um, I, you know, it may take up to 24 hours to pull that trailer down in order for them to get them. So uh, the key thing is just make sure that the trailer doors stay closed um, and and uh, you may have to run some manual defrost while you're running on it, but it, it, it can take, like I said, you, on average, it should only take even up about two hours. If the trailer's doing, if the unit's cooling right and the trailer's in good condition, it should only take you about two hours to really pull down from, from about 80 degrees all the way down to negative 22 degrees. But it, the pre-cool takes time. And so, yeah, absolutely, like Keith said, 30 minutes is not gonna be enough if you're in 100 degree weather, okay? Vice versa on that as well. If you're in negative 22 to you know 30 degrees, negative 30 degrees outside, and you're trying to get it to 70, same situation. You've got to give it a little bit more time. Okay. Say, I got a question for Cole. Uh, one of the first things you said, Cole, was uh, your trip planning for your operators, and and slow down. So I'm I'm going to ask you a, a question about your business partners, your fleet. What's the high, the very highest fuel mileage that some of your operators get? And what's your average um, fuel mileage? Because it seems to me that all ties together with trip planning, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, Steve, to answer your question, I'm, I'm more set on the net fuel cost personally. Uh, net fuel cost across my fleet right now is about 14 cents a mile. Um, you know, they, they do pretty good. Um, I've seen net fuel cost up to, you know, 28 cents a mile, which is just crazy. Guys, we're running the same amount of miles. 
you're just throwing money away at that point. Um, I, you know, I really like, like you to be around 10 cents a mile. Um, you're running the same miles. We're doing that by using, we have a, a, a great fuel routing program. And on the fuel routing, just real quick, um, when you're looking at it, it'll say, you know, put on 10 gallons or 20 gallons. I know that sounds crazy. Follow it to a T. Put on the 10, 20 gallons. What it's looking at, it's trying to get you to a different area. Just enough fuel to get to a better purchase price area. Um, and it looks at the fuel tax and everything. That that absolutely helps you drop. I, I tell guys that all the time, and I sit there and watch their fuel costs drop down. Slowing down, though. You know, you guys don't need to run against the governor. There are times that we have to run faster, no doubt about it. But most of our loads, you're going to have the time built in to slow down and get that fuel cost. We yeah. have to do that in this market. Hey, good, good comment, Cole. Hey, Andy, could we, could you kind of wade in on frozen loads versus produce loads, and when, when to plug the drain holes, and maybe the paper towel trick, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, just for a bunch of new people. I, th I think maybe our old folks know this, but. It could help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that actually hits on the point that I was thinking about. Um, the door seals also, guys, your back door seals are very, very important. I and mean, there's a, we can lose a lot of heat or cool by going out the back door seals. Um, but on frozen loads, one of the tricks, one of the old time tricks that we used to do on the frozen loads, um, you guys know that there's four drain holes on all four corners of the trailers, right? There's, there's a drain hole in every corner. Um, there should be rubber kazoos on the bottom of those drain holes. Okay, basically what the kazoo is is that rubber piece that comes down in there and it flattens itself out. Um, what those are designed to do, they're actually very, very important when, when you, especially when you get onto frozen loads. What they're designed to do is to keep air from coming up inside the trailer, but it allows the water to dry out or to drop out. So um, if those floor, if those kazoos are missing, and you'll also notice they're on the they're on the bottom of the uh, the, the defrost tubes on the bottom of the trailer as well, or coming off the roof unit. But if you put, if those kazoos are missing, paper towels work very, very well. If you get a wet paper towel and stuff down in there, it will actually freeze in that floor as long as you're in the, on that frozen load. Um, so frozen load, it's very, very important to make sure that we keep the air inside the box um, and let it circulate. Uh, and the produce loads, same situation. But the air chutes are direly important when you're hauling produce loads, okay? Air chutes absolutely are the, the most important thing. That's one of the biggest reasons they're in there is for our produce. Um, so you got to make sure that you have that they're tacked up properly and we have proper airflow from the front of the trailer all the way to the back of the trailer. Okay, that's the units are designed. That's all they do is they just recirculate air. So if that air, if we have any restriction in airflow, you're not going to protect that product. So it's very, very important that, the, that those are in good shape. But I know we do get some of our doors damaged by shippers or receivers when they open them from the inside and they damage the bottom of the door from coming in and out with those. And it leaks out from there, the cold air. I mean, what can we do to solve that problem? Yeah, that, that's a good one. And that's, that's probably one of the toughest one to do right there. Um, really, again, if, if you're on a frozen load, same deal. Paper towels, if you can get anything stuffed up in there that's going to freeze, it helps. The only other thing you really do, um, obviously get with road assist and absolutely see if there's some place we can take it and get it, um, get it fixed before we put a load on it. You know, that's part of that trailer inspection. Make sure that it's in good shape. Make sure you don't have any problems. But like you said, if, if it's damaged, if it's damaged beyond too far to where we can't do a quick fix on it, whether, you know, whether it's just duct tape or something like that, and, um, um, or putting the paper towels in there and freezing it, then we may have to have them offload it and take it somewhere and get it fixed after that. So we sometimes can use spray foam too, but that's kind of a, yeah, that's what Road Assist will check, check yeah. with you all about. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. You bet. All right. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Cole. I'm going to have both of you just hang out over here in case anybody has any questions. You know, please feel free to come over here and see Andy. We've got more of our maintenance team back here in the back corner. If you guys raise your hand, Chris and everybody. And then we've got our vendors back here in the back. So we appreciate all that you do for us. If anybody has any questions for them, they'll be available too after the meeting. So, and back in the day, we just thought this was just holding the steering wheel, going down the road and being safe out on the road. But there's much more to this job being a driver here than it is you know just that it's uh, you got all these responsibilities and you've been a fleet manager too so you know what goes into all that so there's a lot that goes into it, it does, so. so very impressive what you guys do out there and it's greatly appreciated so thank you speaking yeah. of appreciation we're going to bring jim guthrie up here and mitch i believe so something that everybody here should be proud of 
another award. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, we're honored this week to uh, receive recognition as uh, Best Fleet to Drive For Hall of Fame. Yeah, give yourselves an applause. Yeah. So, you know, a little bit about this program. Each year we compete uh, to be recognized as, as a best fleet to drive for. And, and uh, on the surface, it sounds pretty simple, right? But uh, really, there's an exhaustive process that we go through on an annual basis to evaluate all of our offering, all of our programs. We compete with over 250 carriers. And uh, we were one of, of uh, six fleets, I believe, to be recognized as the best fleet to drive for. This is the ninth year in a row that we've been recognized in, in that regard, and the third year in a row that we've been recognized as a Hall of Fame member of the best fleets to drive for. So uh, it's a great recognition. Uh, I wanted to let everybody know, um, you know, the, the evaluation process really entails all of the different programs that we offer. Mitch has the trophy over here for anybody that would like to see it. That, that, uh, that jewel, I will tell you, is not real, but it does sit on top of their free floating. So you gotta be a little bit careful. Uh, so anyway, this program evaluates everything that we do uh, for drivers to make quality of life better for drivers. And, and uh, so it's, we're very proud uh, you know, Robert has continually reinvested and invested and reinvested in our people, in our amenities to uh, to allow for what we have here, you know, be it the, the fitness center and workout center, the spa and salon, the doctor's office, all the different amenities that we offer, and many, many more. The programs that we offer, you know, these are all for you to make your, your life better, the quality of life better as a driver take advantage. We probably had driver health and fitness up here earlier. Uh, you know, there's just a wealth of authorings. And, uh, you know, more importantly, what we try to do every year is use this program to make ourselves better. Uh, a lot of the programs that we have today are from feedback from all of you uh, over the years. So if you have additional amenities or offerings that you would like to see, you know, contact the driver advisory board. We do a lot of conversation through that medium. Uh, contact any of us at any time, but uh, you know we want to continually make things better, and so we're committed to that uh, for all of you on a daily basis. So I, this is a great honor. I just wanted to let everybody know we received this honor and very much appreciate all you do. That's all I've got this morning. So thanks, thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. All right, so you know we haven't talked a lot about the Prime app today, but for for you newer folks, the Prime app is an absolute essential lifeline. You know, for your business out there on the road, if anybody has any questions at all about the Prime app, while you're here, Richard and Brianne right over here, the experts, they can answer any question that you might have. So please take advantage of that resource while you're here. Also, if you have any uh, uh, suggestions for topics up here for us to talk about, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. If you got some want some on payroll or whatever it may be, we just randomly rotate people through. But if there's something that needs to be addressed, let us know because we want to address it up here. So. I see a lot of red in the room. Yeah, looks like you got the memo too. Good job. I did. So every week we wear red up here, and red stands for remember everyone deployed. So we'd like to take this time. If you served in the military in any of the branches, if you're in Springfield, Pittston, Salt Lake City, please stand up. Let us recognize you. Let us thank you for your service to our country. That's awesome. All right, Mr. Wookie, you're up. Well, thank you all, it's a great meeting. Uh, I'd like to welcome you new folks that have chosen to work with uh, our company. We're certainly not perfect, but I can assure you every, every day we get up and try to get a little bit better. And what makes us better is your feedback and, and trying to coach us in the right way to, to make things better for everyone here. Um, you know, we did have a really nice, uh, event with the Highway Diamonds and, and uh, a great time. And I can't believe Dee did not ask you Highway Diamonds to do this. If all of you would just take one trainer, one trainee and build it, it would be awesome. And we need to continue to develop our Highway Diamond uh, program. You female drivers do a heck of a job and uh, we, we think that we can make it bigger and greater. So please keep that in mind. 
everybody that not everybody that came here had experience many went through the training program so that's just a pitch for more trainers we're going to continue to grow we're going to need to grow because when business uh, continues to improve we want to be there to to be the first carrier to offer additional capacity and it's getting better been a heck of a challenge been a big downturn for about 18 months I know it's been tough on everyone but it's getting better you know, we're going to work through it. Just trust your fleet manager, trust the process, trust what we got going out here. We didn't build this with smoke and mirrors. We have great service and you all provide that great service. That is truly the differentiator. Nobody does it better than you all. So number one, safety is our highest calling. Don't ever think differently. Although I will tell you, service does matter. So we just need to continue to provide the highest level of surface in the very safest fashion and we're going to be just fine we're going through these bid processes we're winning a lot of volume a lot of new lanes so just hang in there with us i'm going to get we're running out of time i'll get robert up here because i know he wants to speak as well so thank you all very much for what you do thank you vendors back there appreciate you all being here every friday robert go ahead it's yours hey, hey thanks steve Boy, it's good to see a nice crowd in here this morning. Y'all look, uh, you know, mighty beautiful or mighty handsome as, as whatever applies. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a great group. You know, our, our business has survived pretty well in this downfall, this turn back, this re straight recession has been going on. But the reason we have is because of the service you provide, the sacrifices you make. You know, why do we do the amenities that Jim uh talked about well because you all deserve those things and more and more because you make tremendous sacrifices to drive these old trucks you know time away from home it's not an easy job you got to be damn dialed in all the time all the time alert you know to your surroundings and all these crazy four-wheel drivers like steve wookie that's maybe on his cell phone i don't know or doing a text message he knows he shouldn't but once in a while, I think he slips. Now, you all can't do that. But once in a while, I think he slips. And then he try to run you off the road. So you got to watch out for all these crazy folks out here. People, you're, you're the best in the world. We have a great support uh, team in here. I mean, really smart people. And they're working in your best interest. And, you know, that's what Prime's all about. I want to thank you. I want you to know you're appreciated, you're loved, and you're at home right here, and don't try to run off. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go over there and catch you up and bring you back. Thank you. God bless you.